Okay. Um, all right. Good morning and welcome to our first public session on the use of uh, our automated product system APS. My name is Bashir and I'll be your anchor in the course of this presentation. And uh, I'll be taking you through every functionality of um, the portal as we proceed. I welcome you all and thanks for your time in advance. And I expect that within now and the next 30 minutes, we should be done with uh, every form of uh, presentation. All right, if you're with me, let's write. To start with, um, what is the APS? The APS, short code for automated portal system, is just as the name connotes an automated school management system that leverages on the concept of automation to bring together or harness every functionality of a school management system in one particular application. APS by far is one of the biggest in Sub-Saharan Africa, so welcome to one of the biggest things in the industry. I'll take you through every step and hope and pray that you will understand all the functionalities embedded in this, in this uh, uh, program at the end of the day. Now, I'm not going to waste too much time taking you to the nitty gritty of the application. I'll just go straight to the point. What you see here is the login page of the app. This is what the login page is like. And the login page is built on the single entry point protocol. The single entry point SCP protocol is quite new in the market and we are by far one of the first to implement it on the school management system. What this means is that irrespective of the login parameter you are coming with and irrespective of your status as long as this app is concerned, you will all log in through the same entry point. So being you a student, a lecturer, um, uh, pharmacist within the college, the provost, the registrar, the bursa, the ICT director, whoever you are, you will log in through this same entry point. But when you eventually get to the dashboard, what you see is dependent on what you are registered with. You will understand this. So as we proceed in the course of the presentation, you understand what I mean when I say that everyone has a single entry point. So I'm going to make use of three browsers. I will use Mozilla Firefox for the super admin. I will use uh, Google Chrome for student. And um, I will use Microsoft Edge, okay, for another admin. Actually, the, the main thing is going to be happening from uh, Microsoft Edge. I'm just going to be using uh, Mozilla Firefox to change status if they need be, so that we can see the, uh, the different functionality that's embedded. So to start with, I'm going to log in here as the super admin. If I enter the wrong login parameter, of course, you know, the system will reject it. So that is in new. I'm not going to waste your time on that. But if you log in with the right, it's still not correct. Okay. Right, I'm logged in successfully. The login parameter is, is correct. So this is the dashboard for the super admin. Note that when you eventually log in, what you see as a super admin will differ from what another admin will see. What another admin will see will differ from what a student will see. What a student will see is different from what the librarian will see. It's different from what another lecturer can see. So depending on your login access level, what you see will differ. But for a super admin who has complete control of the automated portal system, this is what he can see. On the dashboard here, you can see the total number of registered students, total number of courses, total number of departments, applicants registered for 2021, total number of registered staff, transaction initiated this month, being February 2021, transaction completed this month, and transaction pending this month. This is for the super admin. Then on the menu bar here, on the, on the top left here, he has access to a lot of things too like documentation, general function settings. I'll be explaining each of the functionalities of this things as we proceed. He can manage students, he can manage staff, he can manage blog, he can manage division, manage results, manage courses, manage fees, manage page, manage notification. This is for a super admin. As you can see, he has access to a lot of functionalities. But over the past one month, we'll be working on decentralization. And by decentralization, I mean 
giving access to whom the access is due. For instance, a super admin, you don't have any business what the librarian is doing. What you can do is just to read what he does, but you cannot write into what he does. And as a, the librarian has independent control of his own model. Likewise, the lecturer has independent control of his own model. You can only oversee. So what the, the super admin does, more or less, at the back end is just to manage activities, but it doesn't really control a lot of those activities, but it can manage them over time and report as the case may be. So likewise, all other persons, as a student, a student has independent control over some things, depending on what others would, or what happens in the other models and departments as well. So, but far and large, this is what a super admin can do. Okay, I'm going to log in here as another super admin. Login successfully. I'm on the dashboard. Now you see a similar thing, but if if I go back here as the original super admin now, for instance, and you are see, this guy is seeing the same thing as the super admin because he has been given the super admin privilege. So if I, if anything happened and I change the privilege, you see that what he can see here will be limited, depending on what his duty is within the school. So if I go here, for instance, where I can manage staff. I can add a new staff by merely filling a simple form and submit. It is when registering a staff that you select the status of that staff here. It is when registering the staff that you select the status of the staff. So if you select the status of a staff here, it is that status that the staff will use to enter the system. And it is a status that determines what the staff can see and what they cannot see. Okay. Likewise, I can manage staff. When managing staff, we have access to all the staff details here. So this is the guy that is logged in at the other end. So from here now, I can edit his status and I can edit every other information about him. So if I go down here and I change from super admin to librarian, for instance, and I update the staff record. Upon successful update, if I go back here and I reload the page, this is what happens. The dashboard changes. Now you can see that all the menus on the left here disappear as the librarian has access only over the library modules. Likewise, if I go back and change it to student, what is here will change as well. So you see how dynamic the site works. We've actually got it down to the business of the day, actually. So I'm going to take time out to explain each of the functionalities that is embedded uh, that you can control from the menu bar here. So from menu, you have dashboard, of course, that is what you see right now. You have documentation that takes you through every function of the system. So if you're confused in the course of operation, you can always refer to your documentation to lead you through, okay? Um, general function, as for general function, there are some things that need to be static. Those are the things that you can control from the general section um, area. From here, for instance, you can change the current session and current semester. Apparently, some schools are still operating 2019 to 2020 academic calendar. Others are, uh, on the 2020 to 2021 academic calendar. You can change that here. Likewise, you can change open or close at, uh, uh, course registration here. So if you open course registration, it means that all the students can take part in the, in the course registration process. The reason why we did it this way is to ensure that you can streamline and timeline some things. You can decide, okay, between now and the next two weeks, any student who has not completed this course registration process can no longer register for any course within the school. You can do it so, and you can actually implement that from the end. Yeah. Once you do that, the student at their end can no longer register for any course within the college, within the school, as the case may be. Okay? Likewise, you have um, uh, power over settings. Settings is the general settings of the website, like the site name, the school name, the acronym, which is what is appearing up here, um, the school address, the school email, the school phone, uh, phone number, and all of that. So general settings. It's only the super admin that has access to this, actually. So and then you can log out here. Of course, if I log out, I'll no longer have access to the system unless I re-log in again. Then the admission, under admission you have, you can view admission status. What is the current status of admission? Admission is currently turned on. You can turn off admission. If you do this, it means that the new registration page will no longer be available to prospective students. So you can actually con you, uh, control the timing of your admission. You can see admission lasts for one month. After one month, you can actually turn it off from here. Likewise, you can manage all the applicants by merely selecting the year of application. This for 2020, just select the year and click submit, and all the applicants for that year will come out. You can actually do your search from here. 
by tapping in the name or any other parameter you can remember about a particular stone you are looking for and the details will come out here for you to view okay but you see that somebody is um, red down here is red that's because you have actually completed payment but has not completed registration so I do, it made it this way that you can you can spot students that have uh, made payment but have not completed a registration and you can differentiate them from those who have finished payment as well as registration at the same time. Okay, so I can applicant list. You can get the list of all the applicants. Now this is for schools that have more than one campus. There could be entrance examination going on in one campus and another campus. So if you need the list for a particular campus, all you have to do is select the admission year and the name of that campus and it will bring out all the students that put in for that particular uh, all the departments that are registered for that particular center all you have to do is click on print and all of them will be printed out uh, the list looks something like this it will give you the name the state and the local government of each of the applicants uh, alongside their phone number so this is what you use to call them in on the day of the entrance exam so that they'll be confused there'll be nothing like okay i registered and i lost my sleep there are ways for you to verify if actually the student actually uh, did the registration as he or she claims you have covid19 quite recently we added this one during the coronavirus pandemic to uh, because then schools that were managing more than one campus had to deactivate the other campus just so they could focus on one. In doing that, we needed to harness all the centers into one. So when you click here, all you have to do is select the year, select the senatorial district. Uh -huh. This was implemented because since all the students were coming to the same place and to ensure that COVID-19 protocols are properly uh, uh, you know, observed, we decided to add it so because all the students cannot write the same day. There's going to be mass population within the school that it will be too much to handle them. So you can just select the central district, select the department, and submit. So you can decide, okay, all those within the west central district will write today, all those within east can write today, all those within north central can write today. Just that and that. Alright, so this is results. Still under admission, this is where you manage the result of all the students that have applied for admission. So when the exam has been conducted and you wish to mark them, all you have to do is select their faculty, select their department, select the level, and then you submit. You submit. And all the students that sat for exam in that particular uh, department will come out. Uh, is there any? Let's see. I'm sure all of them should... Uh, out you should see them and you see the parameters for the marking no, it isn't coming out okay look at that then you have notification notification for uh, the applicants you wish to notify them of something that has happened concurrently maybe be before the admission process so you can select you can send notification to all the applicants likewise you can send to only admitted applicants so by selecting by send, selecting the all applicants option you are sending notification to all the applicants irrespective of whether they have been admitted or not and if you select admitted applicants you are only sending the message to only applica uh, uh, admitted uh, applicants so the system makes it pretty easy all you have to do is click on any of the options enter the message for all applicants for all applicants just enter the message uh, the system already has their phone numbers all you have to do is enter their message here and click the the send option and it will send likewise if you click on only admitted applicants option you can fill in for only admitted uh, candidates and then you you send as well but you are limited to 160 characters alone this cannot take more than 160 characters let me test that out so when you can just see this is where it can take it you cannot write any further so it's that limited all right, that is all for the admission model. Now, the next is a student model where you can add and manage students from concurrently. You can add a student here. All you have to do is fill in this simple form for that student. Now, this one is mainly for students that were already there before the system was deployed. But for newly admitted students, they don't need to go. You don't need to go through the rigorous um, activity of registering them on the portal. Uh, once they sat for exam, for entrance exam, and they were successful, they were admitted. The system will automatically move their name from the admission portal to the main students portal. Concurrently, you don't have to do this one. is automated. It runs in the background. So that is that. 
So you can manage students as well. All you have to do is select the faculty, the department, and the level of the student and submit, and all students in that department will come out. You can remove a student. At the same time, you can update the student detail. If you feel what you entered while reason written is incorrect, and you can equally cite for a student uh, using your search bar here at the top. Okay, the blog, uh, just manage blog. That's just what it does. You can add blog here. That is what appears on the dashboard. That's what appears on the dashboard here. The blog section of the main website can be controlled from here. What a masterpiece. I'm sure our developers put in a lot of work here. So there's a block section somewhere down here, I think. Uh, here, recent news. It's, there's nothing here because actually no blog um, um, stuff has been added. So if I go to the back here and I add a headline, for instance, and I say, okay, uh, first post, and I write some details, and I select a cover photo. Uh, let me select one from the pictures. Uh, let me use myself. <laughs> That record. Record new article added successfully redirecting. So if I go here now and I reload, I expect that that particular news article will be there. You see, of course, it's there. So you can read more, and it will take you to the read more page where you can read details of the news and, uh, and that and that and that. So likewise, I can manage that from here. I can edit, the, I can update the news and I can delete the news, depending um, largely on what I want to do with it. So that's for the blog section. The division section manages faculty and department. Okay, you can uh, you know update existing faculties, and you can add a new faculty. Likewise, you can edit and add departments. All you have to do, if you are searching for a particular department, just select the faculty and all the departments in that faculty will come out and you can carry out the update function in them. Okay, so and you can add a new department as well. All you have to do is select the faculty for that department and give the department a name. However, if you change a department name, it does not affect the status of that department because we're not using departmental name, we're using department, what we call departmental ID. That runs in the background as well. So if 10 years ago, the name of a department is computer engineering. And over the course of 10 years, the school decided to change the name from computer engineering to ICT. It means that all the students in that department, their results will now carry ICT. No longer um, computer uh, engineering as it used to be 10 years ago. So even if a student graduated 10 years ago, returns back to the portal to print his or her results, after 10 years, what it will carry is the new departmental name, no longer the old one. So you can change your department as many times as you want to, and it will not change. It will not affect any operation of the of um, the, the APS. Okay, resolve, resolve. So you can compute resolve, print resolve, control result, and work on the master sheet. But competition of result is not something that is very applicable to just anyone. I made it look like this just so the super admin can have a taste of what the lecturers do at their end. If not ordinarily is it ordinary lecturer that's supposed to have access to that. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to log in here. Okay, I'm still here as a librarian. Okay, let me go and change that. Money staff. A minute. Change it from librarian to uh, lecturer. Okay, an update. And I go here. Okay, so what you see here now is just the result model that he has access to. It's no longer the librarian. So you can compute result and print result. In computing result, it, you can see that there are only um, two courses here, right? CSE 1010 and CSE 201. I'm not sure if there's any course at CSE 1010. But if I want to do the same thing here as a super admin, I want to show you something. You see that I have access to only CSE 233. But we're accessing the same page. But what we can see as courses are different. That is because my course is different from your course. So as a lecturer, you cannot mark another lecturer's course. 
I cannot mark your course and you cannot mark mine. If you're handling more than two courses or more than one courses, you see all the courses listed or in, in this um, drop down box. For this particular lecture, there's only two courses. So all you have to do is select uh, this, 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 click on fetch. It will fetch you the name of all the students that register for that particular course here, in 1010, give you the units of the course. All the lecturers have to do is enter CA and exam. That's all. That's the simplicity of the APS. Just enter the CA and exam of individual students and submit in bulk. And that is all you have to do. So the master sheet is, is prepared by the, by the system. The overall um, result, which is the one you can view at your end, is prepared by the student. So let's say for this, for this student, I change CA to 10 and exam to 30. That's all I have to do. I'll click on submit. Once this is done, I can go back and I can go back and print result. In printing result, I enter 10 40, right? Or 10 30. I don't know. Select the session and select the course and click on submit. And here we go. It will automatically calculate the total and the grade for that particular student for you, alongside all other things. So you can actually print this. And when you print it, the elements on the left here won't come with it okay you'll only see you only see what you bring something like this and of course you can you can scale it however you want okay yes. right so that is what electoral can do represent Okay, I'm back to the Zuba admin page. Now, um, same, uh, the, the, the students at their own end here, let me log in as a student, just so you can understand some of the things that a student can do. I'm logging as a student, an ordinary student. And this, from here, you see what a student can do. Okay, can do cost register. Is it uh, cost register here? I think cost register uh, under courses. Uh -huh. You can do cost register and print courses here. You can do all your payments from here or check your payment history. What you have paid for, the amount, the gateway use, the reference, the status of the payment, uh, the date the payment was stationed, the date it was paid for, and you can print your receipt concurrently. Okay? So, you have received for each of them. Okay. You can... New payment. All you have to do is select what you are paying for. Postal accommodation, for instance, or tuition fee or T-ship, depending. This will be added by the super admin. Okay, this will be added under fees by the super admin. We've not got into that. Okay, so and you select the semester you are paying for, the level that you are, and you press continue. Depending on the parameters you've selected here, the system will fetch out what best suits you. That's how much you're supposed to pay for that uh, for that item you have selected for the session, if it's on session basis, for the semester, if it's semester basis, for level, if it's level based, because what a hundred levels of the pays is quite different from what two hundred levels of the pays. And that. Okay, course registration. You can just click on course registration. Okay, it appears you have finished course for the semester and session. If you have difficulty, contact the IC department. That is because it has been locked from the super admin um, end. So had it been, it wasn't locked you see how the student select the courses he wants to offer and enter them in bulk okay so to remove this all that the the super admin has to do is go to courses manage courses okay okay sorry you go to menu click on general function expandable then click on open Okay, if you open it, course reg open successfully. If you open it and the student go back here now and intends to register courses, you'll be presented with all the courses. Now, these students, these courses are auto-generated based on the student's department, based on the current session, based on the current semester, based on the current level. So, a student cannot see a course that's not relevant to his department, that's not relevant to the, state, to the session. But for carryover students, they will have to be registered. Anyone with a carryover will have to go and register the carryover courses at the ICT department. You cannot do that directly here. Okay? All right. You can just uh, select in bulk and submit. If a student is expected to offer up to 24 course units in a semester, and after his selection, the, the, the system sees that the number of course units 
is more than the allowed number of courses for the semester, it will reject that registration. You'll have to reduce the courses. So I can just select everything here, click on confirm selection, and you see the system will tell me 10 units from three selected courses. It's actually counting the units. So if the unit is more than 24, which is what is allowed for that department, and for that, for that uh, session and semester, it will revoke it. The student will have to go and restart the course in the process. And if I go back here, maybe I feel it time is due, I can just close the course registration. Once I do that and I go back here as a student and intend to start my course registration, this is what I see. It appears you have finished course in the senior semester, blah, 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 blah. Okay. You can print course registration once you are done with uh, uh, the registration process. So for library, this is what a student can do. You can book a material ahead of time. You can book a material. And likewise, you can look at history of what you have borrowed, the status, whether you have returned them or not. Okay? So out of six, you see that he has not returned two. Borrowed on Sunday, 15 March 2020 at 8.53 local time. He has not returned those ones. So that's why you see that date return for those ones is empty. But you see, expected return date is set 22nd. So you should be able to calculate when the book, when the, the material was booked, when it's expected to be returned, and when it was finally returned. So if there's any uh, form of due that's supposed to be paid by any students who delay returning a particular material, you'll be able to charge from, from there. And I want us to I want us to some correlation here. So I'm going to change. I'm going to change one staff status to Liberia. Okay, so that you see how the, the library model functions. I'm going to change this to librarian, and you know, only the super admin can do this. So, once I change and I go here, it's now library. So, from here, a librarian can manage types of materials is it a book? Is it a journal? Is it a magazine? Is it a web material? You can actually add a new material type. Maybe you just cover a new one, a new one, PDF, kinda. And it's not web based. Okay, you can manage materials for each of the material types. A material, if it's a book, for instance, you give us the title of the book, the author of the book, the number of copies, and the copies uh, uh, remaining. You're not the one entering this. If if you add a new material, the system will equate the number of copies and the remaining copies. If that particular material is borrowed, uh, one is booked, it will reduce the remaining copies by one. If it is returned, it will up it by one automation so date of publication and date material was added by the librarian let me just give you an overview if a student here for instance borrows this library booking you can actually do this from the comfort of your of your of your hostel okay uh this is let me borrow this book identification on programs written by bill gate i'm not sure there's a book like that number of copies presently is 12 Remaining copies, 12. Date of publication, Saturday, 14th March 2020. And I book it, for instance. It's booked. It's booked. So, if I reload, you see that remaining copies have been down by one. It used to be 12, 12. Now it's down by one. Okay, the librarian at his end here can see that when he managed booking. He can see that Monday, 1st February 2021 at 12.23 exactly at 12, 22, uh, 23 you can see that here so if eventually the student returns it all you have to do is click on submit and it will be cleared if he goes to manage materials now he will see that for that particular book is down by one is down by one so if the student eventually returns it as after collection as a student comes to collect the book he has booked you can be able to see the book in here if there are too many records here you can search for the particular record like the student's name uh, and the date that um, you know he booked and the title of the book for instance if he booked something that has to do with the west just type west and it will bring out titles that relate to west and any other parameter you can use to search any of the books okay you see that this is quite um big okay and for this one now if i want if the student eventually returns the book all i have to do is click on submit and that's it it will mark it the status marked green submitted so if I go to manage materials, I will see that it's now down to 12 copies remaining. Uh, total number of copies 12, uh, remaining copies 12 as well. 
all right so um that is that is just that i'm going i'm not going to strain too much i'm not going to strain too much on that okay so i'm back here as a student i can see the history of my booking i see that i borrowed um, this book which I got just borrow and I and I and I got, I got returned. So many books that I have borrowed, self. Okay, this is it. This one, Monday, first February twenty twenty one. Expected date of return. It was supposed to be returned Monday, eighth February. So the system gives you a time frame of one week to return the book, and uh, or seek an extension at the library department. And the date it was returned is today, the same day it was um, just a one minute interval. It was borrowed at 20, 12 23 and returned at 12 24 the same day. Okay, hostel accommodation. Hostel accommodation. I can see my accommodation history here. Uh, print my booking slip and take it to my hostel, showing all the information of the booking. And I can request for new booking here. Select the session I'm booking for and select the particular hostel. Stem should decide. It appears you have not paid for the selected session. So, for that particular payment, for that for payment of um, hostel accommodation, you have to go to payment, click on need payment, select what you are paying for hostel accommodation. Pay for that particular session and semester, and pay for your level. It's only when you have done that system authenticate that payment that you can come here and book a hostel. Okay, and book a hostel. And then the system should be able to, to proceed you from there. Okay. As for this one, he says you have already booked room two of hostel two for the 2019 to 2020 academic session. Print your booking slip. So if you have booked for that session before you are coming back, this is what you tell you. I just print your slip, call it. Alright. And it tells you here that you are in room two, position five. Okay, this can actually be configured, depending on the type of hostel that you run. Some universities conventionally, their hostel has up to six bed space. So position five means you are allotted to uh, bed five in that particular room. Once it reaches the limit for that room, it will go to the next room automatically. This is, is, is the system is the one that, that that is designed that way. It's not the admin that decides that. Okay, but I'm coming. Let me show you something. If I change this admin to a hostel admin, if I change it to a hostel admin now. And I go here. Sorry about that. And I go here. No longer library. It's now hostel. It's now managing hostel. So I can add the hostel. It is when adding the hostel, you tell us the hostel name, the total number of rooms and number of occupants per room. So if there are six bed space, just put six. If there are ten, put ten. If there are two, put two. So what the system does is during booking by the students. It will look at the particular room. If a particular room is filled, it moves to the next room. If that room is moved, it is filled, it moves to the next one. So if you say only two occupants per room, if it counts one, two in a room, in the entire database for that session, and that room is filled, it moves in the, If it's not filled, it will uh, move the, the next room to that particular room. So you tell us the number of rooms, for instance, maybe 50 rooms in that hostel, and you tell us the hostel name. All right, we can manage the hostel, each of the hostel. You can uh, add a new hostel, manage a new hostel, delete the hostel, update the hostel, however way you want to do it. And you can view occupants per session and per hostel. So for uh, you want to get the name of all the students occupying hostel 1 for 2019-2020 academic session, all you have to do is select it and click submit and it will put that out for you. You can find only two occupants. It will tell you their room number and their position within the room and the date they did the booking. Quite comprehensive. In its explanation and presentation of data. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, for a student, a, a student can actually check his result online via the portal. I can call for a remark. If the student feels that he was cheated, kinda in the course of computation, he feels he should have scored better in the course. He can actually call for a remark. But this will have to be decided by this by the senate management of the school. So, if a student requests for a remark. Uh, uh, the IC department will get it. The registrar will get that um, notification that as soon as requested for a remark, they can push this up uh, to the Senate for, uh, for further deliberation. Because calling for a remark is um, a quite sensitive matter within the school, and you understand that. But that those modules are not active for now. 
if the school wishes that we activate it for students so that students can be able to check their results based on semester and session and department and all of that they can actually do that all you have to do is activate the module from our NDA and it's being active but there are terms and conditions that actually checking of results is not free anywhere in the world okay that's something that is subject to discussion so I'll leave it at that so that's what the student can do from his own end here okay I'm back here as a super admin so for division I've already discussed that for result okay we've talked about that okay you can see okay to control result to control result now um, let me show you something if I go here and change this staff status to lecturer I change it to where is it lecturer and I go to his end I see that okay he has access to result but he can only compute and print he cannot control the result he can only compute and print but if I change the status from here to exams and records department and I go back you discover a slight change okay you see that uh, okay he's not entitled to anything right now we'll work in that but at the end at the super admin end here you will see if you click on result you can see control result and master sheet these two options are only applicable and can only be viewed and controlled by those at the exams and records so in view of our uh, uh, modus independency operation that is going on we are going to move these two to only exams and records so if you click on control result what that allows you to do is to close competition of result for a particular department you can give a department as okay all the lecturers in this department has between now and the next one week to finish competition of student results if a student does not meet that timeline cannot beat that timeline you can actually close the result for that session for that semester and for that department okay that's when you do it from the menu here when you use general function to do it from the menu here you are closing uh, uh what is it called course result for all the department course rates for all the departments but here you can close result per department per session and per semester if you do that all the lecturers in that department cannot compute their result they cannot alter their result again and you can leave it at that for instance if a student reports for pre-marking he felt he was cheated in the course of, um, of, of marking a script the first thing you have to do is to deactivate result competition for that particular department because a, a lecturer can go back and decide to alter the result just so he can escape escape judgment by the senate so but when you you deactivate marking of results here yeah, that lecturer no longer has access to uh, marking the results you can alter anything any longer for that session and for that department uh, for that uh, semester as the case may be okay you can add a course all you have to do is select the and it is here you select the lecturer taking that course so all the admin registered on that on this um system will come up here all of them will come up here you select the lecturer handling that course so you select the faculty you select the department you select the study type ndhnd nc bsc whatever which one it is select the level select the semesters enter the course code okay csc 1010 or csc 2020 <laughs> enter the course title enter the course unit three four five six as the case may be enter total course unit that can register by a student let's say 24 you enter it okay you select the lecturer taking that course and that course will be assigned to that lecturer so when the lecturer logs in to his own end and want to mark the course the courses the, this particular course you've assigned to him will appear in this list of courses okay and you can manage courses that already exist on the system like some of this just select the faculty and department all the courses in that department and faculty will come out you can update them directly from here and submit so that they can take effect on each on each ends okay next you have fees you can manage add fee manage fees pay igr but i put this here for now just so the super admin has access to it for the sake of this presentation if not we based on on, on our uh, independence operation that is currently going on we say we want to make models independence of their functionalities so fees not supposed to be here it's supposed to be with finance so if i go here now even at that 
okay you see some things here you see fees bar let me go to staff and change the status of this staff to finance that is finance okay finance i go to that end now and reload this is what i see so you now fees and transaction applicable to him alone or any other person that we deem fit to give that functionality to or assign that functionality to so for fees he can add a fee all he has to do is select the faculty the fee is meant for the department the class the level the, the name tuition fees school fees hostel accommodation whatever is it meant for indigenous or non-indigenous because in some schools what indigenous pay differs from what non-indigenous pay the amount select the bank that that payment is supposed to go into hmm? select the bank UBA for instance select uh, the bank code each bank has a bank code and the bank you select here must match the bank code so if you have selected UBA here scroll down here and select UBA as well enter the account number that that particular payment is supposed to go into the account name the service type if what you entered here is uh, where is it is tuition fee for instance the service type will be tuition fee as well enter the session this is quite optional okay and then you add the fee this will be added to the fees database so the next time a student requests for a particular to request for payment of um, a payment type what the system does is to fetch based on the faculty if you have selected the department the class and the level of that student and what that student wants to pay for when the student select any of these four parameters then the system will um, output what the student is going to pay uh, the amount the student is supposed to pay respectively once the payment has been done the system directs the payment to a particular bank based on the selection you have made here so if you make the wrong selection ensure your payment is the wrong account you can use my account as a, as an example mm -hmm. all right you can manage fees it's the fees that already exist for each of them you see faculty department class level fee name the type whether it's for indigenous or non-indigenous amount some schools is based on scholarship so we are going to add that too so scholarship and non-scholarship um, um students all right you can pay igr okay internal generated revenue there will this will only appear when there is a need for such there are some schools that have um, skill acquisition centers within the school and in the for within the school such funds sometimes you don't have to go to the bank to pay them once you generate you can take them to the bursary department they'll generate a reference for that payment do it there Maybe all you have to do is go to the bank with the reference uh, pin and that amount and pay it there and you still go to the uh, particular uh, bank account it's meant for so transaction this is something that the super admin doesn't have access to here you cannot do it here so the transaction menu here allows you to manage transactions manage transactions query you can uh, manage this is for comp